Hey everybody, how's it going? Today, Jonas and I are in Spartanburg, South Carolina. So a special shout out to all our American viewers. Why are we here? Well, Spartanburg is home to BMW's largest manufacturing facility. And they're celebrating 25 years at this plant. And not only that, they have something else up their sleeve. What am I talking about? It's this, it's the all new BMW X3. Join us today as we attend the world premiere event here in South Carolina to see what this car is all about. Are you interested? Come on, let's go. We're really lucky here today to actually have a car and some peace and quiet in this nice location to show you this car in a little bit more detail because usually in these world premiere events it's always a big rush but unfortunately we're not allowed to drive this car because this doesn't go into production until later this year August to be specific so we just can kind of look at it touch it feel it but we can't drive it but we will have some uh, taxi rides with some official BMW drivers and we're gonna talk to them and try to understand the best we can about what this car uh, you know will deliver once it goes on sale also we will be speaking to the designer in depth and he will explain all the little nuances and the changes that he has made to the car over the predecessor but let's just take a quick look for ourselves I think the first prominent difference that you immediately notice with the new X3 are the kidney grills they're a lot more larger now than the previous X3, a lot more prominent with this brushed aluminum effect plastic. The vertical slats as well are really shiny, really bold, and again, larger. In fact, there's a two-step grill uh, design. There's the outer layer, as well as ones inside. We'll take a closer look later. And these are actually closed at the moment, but they will open if there's extra uh, need for cooling air into the engine bay. So these are active uh, systems. Further down, you see the sensors for the radar cruise control, the uh, parking system, the front camera, a much more sculpted muscular design for the front bumper. This is the M Sport uh, package, so it has more aggressive bumpers, more aggressive side skirts, a bigger wheel, and of course, a bigger engine. We'll hear more about that later on. But uh, as you can see down here, much more angular and uh, aggressive lights. This is the adaptive LED lights that, that is there on this car. And another part of this active aerodynamic package is like, for example, there's a opening over here which channels air from the front of the car around the front wheels to make it more smooth and slippery and add to the downforce. As we go down the side you'll notice that these wheels are 21 inches they have this brushed gray metal effect on the uh, inside and these shiny detailing towards the edge. I think they look really cool really menacing really sporty and further down nice design line which starts off here continues all the way through to the back of the car. A gray uh, casing for the external mirror. There is a fake vent, uh, you know, cosmetic uh, detail over here. This doesn't really serve any purpose. It's not open, it's just, it's just there to look good, I guess. The M Sport badging over here. The roof line is fairly straight, slowly starts to taper off, but it's not really a coupe if you want something like that of course you know that there's the x4 which is a much more has a much more sharp uh, uh, sloping roof line towards the back like i was saying we have a spoiler over here i really like how there's a kink on the outer edges so it adds that extra effect in fact this kind of reminds me of the jaguar f-pace to some extent as we go further down there's a 
interesting design line which comes from the top of the rear lights, goes all the way across the hatch and kind of, you know, adds emphasis to the width of the car. Further down you have the reversing camera, the BMW badge, and over here um, the parking sensors as well as uh, the reversing camera. And these rear lights as well are new and they're a lot more three-dimensional. But to my eye, I don't really find it, you know, that different than the previous version or the other BMWs. It's still, you know, I don't think it's so new that it's really exciting me. But I mean, they do the job well and it's okay. Further down, we have a more aggressive style rear diffuser with a different color. This is more like very dark gray, a dirty gray color. And hooray, <laughs> actual twin exhaust. These are not fake. And these are not even like an external casing. They're actually welded to the, uh, the, the regular exhaust pipes from the catalytic converter. So this side, as well as on this side. And they're really large. I mean, I could probably fit two fists inside. And it sounds pretty cool as well. We'll show you that in a bit. Here we have the key. This has automatic um, keyless entry, so now it's locked. Just bring my hand close to it, and then it unlocks automatically. The door is quite large, fairly tall, and there's some interesting detailing. Like, for example, over here you have an X punched into the side. And as we look on the top as well, there's really nice material up here. And a nice Harman Kardon sound system. An interesting textured inlay for the door panel up here. Some what feels like actual metal instead of just a plastic, so that's always nice. This is unfortunately real animal skin leather, and we here in Ottawa Fuel we prefer animal friendly leatherette. But apart from that, the switch gear has a really nice tactile, tactile feel. It's also quite shiny and has an aluminium effect, but this certainly is plastic. As we go further down, materials here are a little bit harder, but they don't seem that flimsy. They're quite rigid and they still have a little bit of heft in it. Also, if you look inside the door pocket, you see that there is a, a cubby hole, but there's also a divider for a beverage holder. So a little bit extra detail, which always you know, makes you feel good about it. The M40i badging down here for the sports version of the X3 that we have. As we take a look down here, the seats are fully adjustable electronically, as you can see, for height and lumbar support, side bolstering, the base and the back. There's even a way to extend the under thigh support. Of course, this material is animal skin. I don't need to repeat myself. Uh, you know that we always prefer artificial leather. Let's hop inside and let's take a closer look. BMW, the ultimate driving machine. And to stay true to that sentence, the seating position is actually quite sporty. I have it all the way down to its lowest position. And even though this is an SUV, it's a very sporty, uh, sporty seating position. I'm fairly low down. The steering wheel also has a fantastic grip and it has paddle shifters behind it. And it's chunky and small, so it feels very flickable. Anyway, why don't you hop into the driver's seat and let's see what's what. On the left side of the steering wheel, we have the assistant controls for the assistant systems. Lane keeping assist, the distance uh, that you want to maintain with the car in the front for the adaptive cruise control, speed limiter, and of course to set that faster and lower, and paddle shifters for the gearbox. On this side, we have controls for the menu. Right now, these things don't work, but I can imagine that you can change the display over there. A button to turn the steering wheel heater on and off. And in the instrument binnacle itself on the dashboard, it's completely digital as you can see, but it has this nice protrusion, this 3D, 3D effect with, this, uh, with these circular inserts 
So which kind of makes it seem more analog, but at the same time, of course, the actual instruments are all completely digital. As we go towards the side, of course, you have the windshield wiping uh, control stock on this side and the indicator and the light controls on the other side of the steering wheel. The start stop button and interestingly and also really logically the automatic engine shut off button is right below that. As we go towards the center we have the air conditioning uh, AC vents as well as the hazard button and this is an, it's a very cool shortcut button. So this goes to your intelligent safety system. You can have everything on or you can go to individual and in individual now we get an idea of all the different safety features. There's pedestrian alert which is warning and brake intervention, collision warning then you can set if it's early, medium or late you know warning and brake intervention, lane departure warning, steering intervention so it'll actually steer the car if you're going uh, off lane, if you're veering off the lane, then lane change warning. And as you can see, as you keep changing with, with these uh, menus, the navigations are also, sorry, the animations are also so intelligent. See, <laughs> the car is, has a, the indicator light on now. If I go here, the steering wheel, the, the wheel turns a little bit. Now I click on this, you'll watch, you'll see and you'll notice that the wheel straightens out. So all these little details, I mean, the attention to detail is always something I appreciate in a premium car, and this car really has that. Side collision warning, give way warning, so a whole host of safety features. And of course, you have a, a button to instantly keep everything on, and that's, I think, the best way to leave it. We'll come back to this later on, but let's just take a look at the other buttons first. So you have the mode for your audio input. This has the Harman Kardon sound system. It sounds really nice. Then the volume and power button to turn off and mute the audio CD player. The buttons to for your presets and a uh, sensor, eject button, seat controls, and your climate control unit dual zone with seat heaters and defoggers, the usual things. As we go further down, you'll see the M badge over here, so you don't ever forget what you're driving. A place to keep your phone, and this is a charging, uh, a charging port as well. It also has a USB socket on the side, a couple beverage holders, a 12 volt power socket down here and you can cover it all up if you don't need it. Also nice materials for this slider. The lever for the gearbox. Button to turn off the traction control and you have the adaptive uh, uh, the driving modes Sport, Comfort, Eco Pro. Of course we don't have the chance to try out any of these things. This is just a premiere event so I cannot really you know, describe or, or uh, review these things right now, unfortunately. We'll have to wait until we get the actual test car. Parking sensors off. Hill descent control. We will demonstrate this when we're on the off-road track later on. And the, the camera assistance systems for this car is, are so impressive. I mean, look at the detail and the angle, this wide angle that the front-facing camera provides. Of course, you also have a rear camera, 360 camera, and a very interesting, like, you know, third-person view of the car. I don't know how they were able to achieve that. It's really interesting and we'll, we'll try to show you that if we can later on. Coming back down here, electronic parking brake, automatic, uh, the function for that. An interesting L-shaped insert of aluminum effect plastic to separate this textured plastic on this side and the glossy black on that side. This is the control as well for the infotainment system, of course it's a touch screen, but you can operate it with this system. We're very familiar with this BMW's um, infotainment system. It has shortcut buttons for media and contacts, your communication, jump to menu, map, navigation, back. So very easy to understand. And let's take a closer look over this side. 
This is the armrest, really padded, really wide, so it's fairly comfortable. It opens up to reveal a really large cubby hole in the bottom with another USB socket. There's a light here. Let's give it the shake test. As expected, doesn't budge, so really good build quality. And finally, towards the passenger side, there's a damped and lockable glove box. And it's actually pretty large. It has a decent size. You can definitely fit uh, a water bottle as well as the information, sorry, the uh, user manual. And you can lock it up if you want. Now let's take a look at the infotainment system while we're up here. So it's very intuitive, very nice, very, uh, uh, um, very good detail and really good uh, clarity. <laughs> That's the word I wanted to use. Really good clarity and it's very easy to use. And yeah, right now, not a lot of the systems are not uh, functioning properly because this is, as you can see, just a pre-production prototype. So we can't really review this too much right now. But overall, I'm fairly impressed. Yes, the interiors are not, you know, such a big departure from the standard BMW cars. This is very much like the 5 Series and uh, it still has the same ethos as the BMW. But that's not to say that it's bad. It's definitely very good. It also gets things like gesture control, which never works when you want it to. But um, overall, I'm fairly satisfied with the front seat of the BMW X3. What do you guys think? I want to hear from you. Put your comments down below. I forgot to mention, we have a panoramic roof. And look at these lights. Look at these details. They look like waves. It looks, it's so nice. I like that. Anyway, <laughs> back to the panoramic roof. A very large roof, a panoramic roof, so really opens up the cabin, makes it feel really big, really light and airy. You can also open up the sunroof. Just first, you can you can do keep it ajar and then open it up. So about one third of it can be opened, but I think that's fairly decent. So yeah, pretty cool. I don't really ever want to be sitting in the back seat of a BMW. I want to be driving it behind the wheel. But anyway, let's take a look. Well, the door doesn't open that wide. It's okay. Even the opening is fairly tight down here, even though there is quite a little bit more room towards the top. In the back door itself, you have a nice shade, a sunshade. The same textured material on the top with that aluminium effect inlay, same padded armrest, a uh, door pocket with a beverage holder. Stepping inside, again, as you can see, I kind of have to reach my foot in through that gap, so it's not the easiest to get into. Now the new X3, because its wheelbase has been extended, has a much more spacious cabin but I don't really think that its back seats are its strongest, uh, strongest point because as you can see, I have okay knee room. Headroom is also not too bad. This also has a large panoramic sunroof, but I don't really feel like I'm that comfortable and I'm only five foot eight or 1.7 meters. And this seat is set to my driving position. As you can see down here, my feet, I can't really extend them. They hit the bottom of the seat. But in this segment, yes, there are more comfortable car, uh, SUVs with bigger back seats. But I guess, you know, you have to compromise a little bit. The center seat is fairly comfortable, thanks to the bench being flat. But of course, this is a four-wheel drive, X-Drive uh, platform. So there is a big transmission tunnel in the middle. So you do have to share your uh, footwells with the, your co-passengers. But on the bright side, there is a third climate control zone. So it's two in the front and one in the back. You have your own vents and you can set your own temperature. And you even have seat heaters and isofix points for the outside two seats. Finally, there is a central armrest with cup holders. This X3 gets an automatic tailgate, which you should be able to open by kicking your feet under the bumper. But these are not really production cars yet. These are still 
pre-production prototypes, so perhaps that system has not been enabled. But anyway, you have a button to open the tailgate, and you can move the parcel shelf out of the way really easily. A very wide and rectangular loading area, very little intrusions from the wheel arches or anything like that. Very usable place, completely flat loading lip, and the bumper as well doesn't protrude too far back, so hauling larger items is really easy. It has some scuff plates over here so you don't damage the uh, bodywork when you're loading in our large suitcases. As well as on the sides you have these rails with these sliding anchor points so you can take them out or you could put them in and use them to tie your uh, luggage down. The floor has a gas charged uh, gas <laughs> charged strut, Ugh, a bit of a mouthful. So it opens and stays open by itself. You can put this uh, Nesh uh, Met divider uh, inside if you want, don't want to use it. There's a space over there to keep some more uh, things. But uh, as far as I can tell, there is no spare tire. I can't lift this out of the way right now. So there is no spare tire. And I'm sure in the production car there will be a uh, tire puncture kit over there, pretty sure. And of course, int most importantly, you can split the seats with latches on the side. They split in a 40-20 fashion, or they should at least. There we go. <laughs> Again, forget this car, it's still not production ready. So, and you can also remove this parcel shelf by, there's a little button over here and which will release it. And you can actually put this away down here. I don't want to try that now, but like I said earlier, we will be talking to the desire, designer, the man who designed this car, and we'll talk to him and he will tell us, uh, you know, all the special features of this car. So make sure you don't go anywhere. Let's see what powers this beast. This is the engine for the X3 M40i. It's a three liter twin turbo inline six engine which makes 360 horsepower, petrol obviously, longitudinally mounted and the previous X3, the top range model made 300 horsepower so this is 60 horsepower more than that. This competes with the likes of the Audi SQ5. There's even rumors, not really rumors, we're pretty sure that there's even going to be an, a proper M X3 with over 400 horsepower. This has the X-Drive all-wheel drive system, so it's primarily rear wheel biased, but it can send power to uh, the front as well. And because this engine is longitudinally mounted, it's again not uh, front wheel biased at all, and it has a longer bonnet to give it a much more sporty appeal. I'm here with Mr. Calvin, the exterior designer for the all-new BMW X3. So he's going to walk us around the car and tell us how it's different from the predecessor and all the special features that he has designed into this car. Mr. Calvin? Cool. Thank you very much. I can hold Sir, you. Okay, cool. Sure. Uh, we're going to start here with the uh, kidneys because the kidneys is the brand new element uh, which is really giving a lot of presence, a lot of modernity and a lot of power and of course being an X car, that's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. um, so they've grown heavily in size, um, a very nice technical chamfer on the corner uh, which brings you into like a very modern sort of sculpture so it almost feels like they're sticking out of the, the, the hood. Mm -hmm. and that's um, in a very high position so it gives a lot of presence that really like almost like a puffed up chest uh, like a superhero in a suit um, very precise lines on the hood which give a lot of uh, very sophisticated surfaces in between so it's this balance between very precise and soft and very powerful air intakes mm -hmm. on the side so the x-car is all about power um, robustness new LED fog lamps, nice and horizontal, thin, very modern. 
and also the front headlamp graphics. Now with this hexagonal double round, which brings the BMW icon of the double round headlamps uh, into the future. I also see in the lower part of the bumper, this is a little bit different than the other car, which yeah. we will show you guys in a minute. So is this part of the M performance package? That's correct. So there's uh, two versions here. One is the M Sports package and one is here the luxury line. So first time ever that we've brought luxury line to the X vehicle, you can see there's a combination of the uh, black underbody uh, claddings in combination with the chrome, with giving it the sophistication. We also have an X line, which has uh, the aluminum, uh, al aluminum rather, <laughs> trims on it. And um, also the base model also. There's also an M40i, the top model, the, the halo car of this uh, X3. And, um, Actually, while we're here, I might also show you a nice little detail on the kidneys here. You'll notice that there's actually two levels of um, kidney bars, the second being closed, and this is an active layer. So what this means is that it opens and closes depending on the aerodynamics, depending on the air requirements of the car, um, how much does the motor need at the time. And this is one of several aerodynamic features that we brought into the car that we designed and engineered into the vehicle to give it the best in class aerodynamics. So we have a drag coefficient of 0.29, which is best in class, which is matching the X1. And this is uh, better than the predecessor by about three points. Um, so it's a quite a big achievement. And um, one other feature that, that helps us do that is a specially designed in air curtain here where you can see the uh, air coming through it exits uh, just in front of the front wheel uh, getting the airflow to wrap nicely around the car in a very efficient way and i'll show you a few more in a bit yeah we might as well move to the body side now so when we see the body side of the car this is where we see the big changes um, we have an extended wheelbase we moved about 50 millimeters or two inches a wider in the wheelbase and the, those uh, measurements mean more interior space for our occupants. Um, you can see that the gesture of the hood is a lot higher. Once again, I talk about that higher amount of presence in the front end. Uh, we see uh, these new wheel arches, which are very uh, uniquely shaped, very modern and leaning forward. So it's a, a very robust form, but with a forward charge to it. Um, once again, sort of charging forward, led by the kidneys at the front. Um, there's also a very nice elongated uh, window graphic. Uh, speaks to the versatility of the car and elegantly stretched, giving it a nice amount of length. Very powerful front and rear fenders on the car. And also a uh, very nice execution of uh, the main character lines here, where it disappears in this triangular shape mimicking that sculpture of the hood and reappearing behind the rear wheel arch. So it really emphasizes, here is the power on the rear wheel, here is where the muscle is, and it's all about the four wheels sitting very solidly on the car, um, on the ground. Then uh, here we have the air breather, uh, which is a, a nice decor element, really giving the quality of this car and moving into this very large um, surface here which feels very modern so big surface movements give it that confidence and uh, also modernity there. So are these um, uh, air channels in the front on the sides actually functional or are they more uh, of a design feature? The one in the front is functional bringing us the aerodynamic points and this is uh, more a decorative element giving the quality aspects to the car and the sportiness also. Uh, if we move around to the rear maybe we can uh, close the trunk briefly. So, on the rear, what we notice is firstly, the, from the roof, we have this very technical sculpture. Uh, why is there this depression here? And that's another one of those features which helps bring us to these uh, great aerodynamic numbers. Uh, we reduce the aerodynamic cross section at the rear. Um, then also we have a nice little spoiler lip here bringing the very strong aerodynamic cutoff edges we call them. So it just extends the amount of distance which the air can travel bringing the efficiency higher. And then when we zoom out a little bit we're going to see that 
This car is very robust, it's very sporty, it's very wide, and it's got a very sporty cabin sitting on very, very strong shoulders. And that's very important for any sort of BMW to sit very strong, uh, to feel very stable, especially in X-Car, it's got to be very robust and solid. The new tail lamps are very interesting uh, with this unique signature and they're very three-dimensional as well. So they're three-dimensionally sculpted. You can really see that impression from the three-quarter view. And uh, when we move into the lower, we start s seeing the, the horizontal lines giving the width to the car and also the two double round uh, exhaust pipes which are standard on every, every vehicle. Every model will have uh, two exhaust pipes on both sides. So that's not a M Performance pack uh, only? No, no. So what differentiates it is that in uh, most of our models we'll have two circular exhausts and on the M Performance, the 40i, the, the top model, we'll have a very a robust uh, uh, free-formed uh, rectangular exhaust which mimics the uh, wheel arch shape. Very powerful. Yeah. It's very good to see um, actual exhaust. I mean, yes. uh, quite a few cars, including big performance cars that I've uh, we see recently, are uh, following this new trend of just putting a decorative plastic right, exhaust right. tip in the front, which yeah. many of our viewers extremely dislike. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And the real exhausts are somewhere hidden away. Right, but right. But it's, it's good to see that BMW is staying core, uh, true to their core ethos of having performance-oriented driving, and that also reflects in Absolutely. these small details like the tailpipes. Absolutely. These are both uh, functional exhausts, and if we check the underbody, we will see that. And also the, the underbody is the fourth and last point of how we achieved uh, the aerodynamic uh, CX.029. Uh, yeah. um, Perhaps you could uh, give us a brief look at, at the, uh, the more yeah. elegant luxury model as yeah, well. Sure, sure. So here in the luxury line, you can see that it's a bit different approach. We have a lot more uh, chrome and aluminium trims here. Uh, wrapping around the uh, DLO, the, the daylight opening, also on the air breather there. And the underbody has a bit of a different approach with this uh, horizontal trim uh, mimicking uh, the, the skid plate. Um, and also the black claddings give it a bit more um, off-roady character, lifting the weight of the car a bit higher. So whereas the M Performance or the M Sport package is a bit more grounded, um, the Luxury Line, X Line, base model will all be a bit more the off-road character. Also on the rear we have um, very interesting features on the Luxury Line. Um, also the chrome trim on the lower with this underbody protection theme. And then perhaps later when we go around to the front again, you'll notice the difference also in the kidney bars with the two levels of uh, the chrome kidney bars uh, on the luxury line, which gives it a, a very nice, sophisticated elegance. So here you can see on the luxury line, the two layers of the kidney bars, both highlighted in chrome. It's almost got this very nice, sophisticated pinstriping effect. So that's what I really love about it. Once again, they're active uh, kidneys here. So it's in the closed position now, only open when there's uh, air required. Also the chrome on the lower and very technical, very futuristic uh, uh, details on the air intakes, integrating very nicely with the radar positioning that um, gives the di um, distance to the car in front automatically. Another thing which I notice is uh, a lot of cars nowadays as well have a separate plastic facade for the front and, and the actual hood of the car ends somewhere about right, here. Right. And I think it's also because of uh, the crash sure, insurance yeah. claims because if you can just replace that part, it's yeah. uh, much more efficient and easier and cheaper. Right. But uh, BMW has actually gone all the way down, you know, almost of a clamshell. Yeah. Uh, it, it tapers inwards yeah. and it's all the way to the front of the car. So That's right. That's right. Here, here we bring the hood all the way to the front, first leading from the, uh, the lights with a very nice uh, shut line pointing to the corner of the kidneys. So all this is very logically organized and very well thought out, then extending across. And then here, when we come lower past the camera, um, we move into the main structural bumper here on the lower. And that's where we get uh, the offset that we need uh, to fulfill all the crash and also at the same time fulfill um, any uh, insurance requirements. Well, that's fantastic. Yeah. Um, 
Could you also maybe help yeah. us with the interiors? Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. <laughs> okay. Uh, first off, in the interior, what we um, immediately notice is the upgrade in terms of the materials. So a lot more uh, sophisticated trims, uh, aluminium uh, going around the car. Um, this nice trim is really like stretching the dash. So we have an accent here on the left and an accent on the right in the A pillar. And that's really giving the width. When we look onto the uh, door side, we see a nice embossed X uh, emblem, which gives a, a sense of pride uh, to the owner. And also uh, very nice uh, flowing, very dynamic lines and integrated with the wood trim. Above we have the uh, contour lighting, which gives a precision to the theme. And below the ambient lighting, giving a really uh, nice sense of space. Uh, what's also very nice is um, here the em embossed X3 emblem here and also the uh, plenty of storage uh, for your key, for, uh, cup holders, induction charging, very large um, uh, in, uh, screens which can be controlled with a gesture. Um, you can even rotate around the car, uh, 360 camera view. Um, you can touch screen it so you can interact in a multitude of ways and also when we close this bin, it really integrates very nicely back into this uh, gear selection area. Uh, what's also nice, uh, here it's closed right now, but uh, when we have it open, it's a very, very large panoramic roof, uh, which has grown by about uh, 12 centimeters or roughly 3.5 uh, inches or so. And this is really giving the sense of space to the whole car, a very nice experience. Also, uh, when we see the rear of the car, we'll notice a very similar door side. But what that means is that there's lots of uh, aluminum trims going around um, on the doors and in the um, middle uh, console area for the rear passengers. And what this means is that uh, the interior occupants, they're definitely invited to the party. They're not left out. Um, they are very much part of this experience, of this sophistication, of this luxury. Um, here you can see once again what I was talking about for the rear. This very nice aluminum trim giving a sense of uh, luxury and sophistication also for the rear occupants. Um, I'll just bring you quickly back into the rear because I'm going to show you the trunk space now. So here we're at 550 liters and uh, I'll just show you how the interior uh, rear storage uh, compartment works. A uh, very nice feature from the interior team here. We're just going to push this button to release the latch. And take this out. And what do you do with this thing? You, you never know where to put it. So we just open up the lower. And then uh, we have a very nice area for this to fit perfectly flush into the lower body of the car. And we close that up. And there we have it. So. And of course, you can also uh, get it with the smart opener uh, where you can activate it with your foot to activate the, the trunk opening. Yeah, so I think all up, you know, the X3, the new one, we're really proud of this car. Um, it's grown a lot in size, a lot more space in the right places, bigger wheels. We're going from 18 inch all the way up to 21. So really giving that sportiness to the car. Rock solid stance, super important for any X car. Um, cleaner, more precise lines, flowing surfaces, and lots and lots of character, lots of attitude at the front, which is what we expect from any BMW X car. So there you go. <laughs> well, thank you so much for your time. You're and welcome. I think, uh, you know, I couldn't have done it any better. Yeah. You heard it from the designer himself, who was pretty much in charge of the entire car. Yeah. So um, let us know what you think about this design and all the improvements and the changes over the predecessor, and put your comments in the section below. I'm here with Mike and he's going to be taking us for a spin on the new X3 M40i. This has a 3 liter twin turbo inline six 
petrol engine which makes 360 horsepower. It has, um, uh, yeah, well, it has four-wheel drive, as I understand, and it apparently can do zero to 100 kilometers per hour or 62 miles per hour in 4.8 seconds. And from what I can see right now, it certainly seems that's quite possible. So Mike, maybe you can give us an idea of how, how this car compares and how it drives as compared to the previous X3. You know, AJ, just when you think there's no way they can make it better, they surprise you. Uh -huh. The engineers and designers have done an incredible job with this car. It handles very flat. It's very direct in its steering. They've upgraded the suspension and multi-link suspension, and the car handles fantastically, as you would expect from a BMW, but they've really upped their game with this version. Mm -hmm. And do you think that um, the extended wheelbase has some, some parts of play in that, I think, uh, to in enhance stability and mid-corner grip is the wheelbase. Can you feel the difference that it, that it makes? Uh, you can, you know, uh, it's not that the car previously was unstable at all, it's just with the added dimensions it does provide maybe a little more enhanced stability. You can see how, car, how well the car turns in there, how controllable it is, how flat the car handles through the corner. I mean, it really handles more like a very nice sports sedan, as in BMW, mm -hmm. as opposed to an SAV. And, and the, the, the four-wheel drive system, the X-Drive, it's uh, still rear-wheel drive bias, so it doesn't really it feel like a four-wheel drive or a front-wheel drive car. It tends to oversteer and it tends to give the dynamics of a rear-wheel drive car. Is that still true for the new X3? Oh, uh, absolutely, and uh, you know, with the new suspension enhancements, even more so. You know, the car, uh, all cars, you want to have a little understeer for safety in it, mm -hmm. but it's not exorbitant, so the driver can truly enjoy the driving experience in the car, but still have plenty of safety. What do you think, um, you know, is one thing that they could perhaps change? Because as far as I understand, the new X3 has still not gone into production yet, and that's going to be starting in August. So right now what we're driving is essentially a prototype. So maybe there's some time for them to uh, develop or change some small things and change the tuning. So. If there's one thing that you would want to see improved before this car goes into full production, what, what would it be? Well, AJ, you know, it would be uh, just sitting here driving at this minute. Honestly, it would be hard for me to pick anything. I mean, the car has plenty of power. Mm -hmm. um, it, the handling is great. It's a fun car to drive, which you can't always say about an SAV. You know, it's utilitarian, but not necessarily fun. This car is fun. Listen to sound. The car sounds fantastic. The gearbox is really good. I'm shifting with the paddles currently. You know, off the top, I would say they've uh, kind of checked all the boxes, if you will. Okay. Perhaps maybe some less uh, weight, re weight reduction. That would definitely help any car. And I still see that this has a very plush interior, really good sound deadening, and, you know, a lot of... Uh, uh, the up, the full uh, infotainment system, so there's certainly a lot of creature comforts. I mean, this is not the M, uh, the MX3, which I've also heard is coming out later, um, an actual full-blown M version of the X3. This is still the, uh, uh, the, the 40i, so perhaps that car would have even more bared uh, interiors and a lot more weight reduction and a lot less sound deadening. But I must say, sitting here in the passenger seat, it does, it does change direction incredibly well. The body does roll, um, but I think that's very much to be expected in a car of this size. And again, it is an SUV. The visibility is also really excellent because you're sitting a little bit taller, uh, I mean, higher in the uh, car. So you have really good visibility outwards as well as on the sides. And like you were saying, Mike, because this is a, a real SUV, there's a lot of utilitarian uh, functions you can put a family of four or a family of five with their luggage in the back. Of course, you probably shouldn't be driving like this if you have your family inside. But um, so the X3 kind of has something for everybody. Absolutely. I mean, uh, I think it's going to be if you can get people to drive this car and they have a feel for a car at all, they're going to buy it. Mm -hmm. 
Well, thank you so much for your time and your insight. And I'm excited to get a chance to drive this car maybe later this year when uh, they officially launch it. And um, I will bring my review to you guys uh, when we have our hands on the car. My pleasure. Now we're in the standard diesel variant of the X3, although we're not really sure exactly which diesel engine. <laughs> Those uh, specifications are still not uh, published yet. And I'm here with Mr. Derek. Yes. So he's going to be our off-road driving instructor for this leg of the uh, X3 experience. So Mr. Derek, can you give us some idea about you know, what makes the new X3 better off-road than the previous version? What have they done to improve this car? Well, the big change is the rigidity in the chassis and the body, the way the car works together, it is much more rigid and the chassis is able to put power down to the ground in a much more efficient way. Also, they have improved dampers at all four corners, which have a two-stage valve that is able to control rebound, which for, for big travel as well as small travel, it actually adapts with this two-way valve that gives you better response on slow speed, high travel type events like mm -hmm. you'd have off-road, right. but then that same damper works fantastically on pavement for the higher speed, small dampers uh, adjustment, rebound adjustments that you'd need on pavement. And this new valve and the new suspension combined with the new rigidity and the new chassis mm -hmm. really gives the car much more stability and confidence off-road. Well, I was gonna say, as you can see from this little particular obstacle right mm -hmm. here, we call this the frame bender. Right. The whole idea is, is to really show you how the frame doesn't bend. So e Even though we've got the car up in the air here, we've got one wheel off the ground. Mm -hmm. You can open and close all five of these doors. There's no twist or flex. There's no, there's no chassis mm -hmm. feedback. There's no squeaks or rattles. And watch as we drive through this, this left front starts to come up in the air. You mm -hmm. give it just that proper little, you can feel that. That it's on just two wheels right yes, now. Yes, exactly, right. yeah. And then you feel that little, little seesaw action. Right. No problem from this chassis, super rigid. The system is also really impressive. I'm actually, oh, uh, I'm because sorry, yeah, go ahead. It has that uh, kind of, an, it goes, has like an external view, not just the top down three, uh, 360 degree view, but at times, um, it kind of shows the actual car and, and you know, kind of pans past it. It's Absolutely, very, yes, it does, and it, it it'll, it actually has a view, I don't even know how it does it. <laughs> it seems to show you from, from outside, outside exactly. not just top down, right. but from, from all the sides around laterally. Plus you can see these new the lines here and here. This shows you where the wheels are pointed mm -hmm. as well as what the full capability of the steering travel right. would be. Okay. So you can determine clearance before you try right. a particular obstacle. Interesting, very nice. But um, do you think that the general X3 owner is really going to take this car off road? <laughs> Probably no. not. No, of course not, right? I, I don't think so. I mean, 90 to 95 percent of these vehicles Stay may never the see. Right. Yeah, may never see the big most grass. Maybe is when they are picking up the mail or something at the end of the driveway. Right. But just because drivers and owners don't do it doesn't mean the car can't do it. We are very proud of the on-road, on-pavement capabilities, mm -hmm. as well as the off-road capabilities. I'll give you a really great example here. Mm -hmm. This particular obstacle is very exciting. People love this because it does something like that, right? Oh, wow. <laughs> I was not expecting that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I knew you weren't expecting it, right? Right, okay. So you can see the car I mean, even when it's jacked up in the air like this, with one wheel way up off the ground, still, even though with these angles, the mm -hmm. car feels very confident, very capable. Mm -hmm. So do you know the actual uh, ground clearance number? Uh, I don't know the ground okay. clearance in, in inches, I in don't. Inches. Okay. But uh, has I know it been that- increased over the previous one or is it more or less the same? I think it's more or less the same. Right. I think the, I do think the general dimensions, I do know this vehicle is 55 kilograms lighter than mm -hmm. the last generation vehicle. Mm -hmm. And 
but it has you know increased power and it has increased interior cargo interior passenger as well as cargo volume right in roughly the same size package right. with the same amount of clearance I think that's also because of the extended wheelbase because we were when we were out on the uh, the performance track in the M uh, 40i yes uh, or the X whatever 40i even there the extra length that is now in the wheelbase right I think also aids in the stability so it's trying to automatically park us that's why I'm saying that oh, okay <laughs> <laughs> it automatically will parallel park itself and the parking mm -hmm. assistance uh, the new parking assistant is really cool, by the way. Mm -hmm. Even though this doesn't really apply to off-road, the old generation would do a parallel park for you automatically. Mm -hmm. This new generation can parallel park as well as perpendicular park for you, okay. forwards and backwards, automatically. It's really it's pretty cool. Right. I mean, uh, there's also the you can do it with the key in yes. the in, yeah in the in the sedan version. Yeah. The uh, yeah five sure, the seven the seven the five and the seven. Right. That's made for very tight uh, European garages in right. general. So you can hop out and you let the car park itself. Park itself. And then you can also crank it and retract it, bring it out of the parking space at the same time. Right. This, by the way, is a 38 degree angle climb here of mm -hmm. uneven rock. Mm -hmm. We're doing it at about 1600 RPMs. No problem for the diesel X3. Right. I mean, it also seems like it has really good approach and departure angles because oh, yeah. we haven't heard any scrapes or any you know uh, the, the the chassis bottoming out on any of these obstacles so really impressive that way fantastic view of the blue ridge as well mm -hmm. <laughs> so this facility uh, you, as you guys were telling us is uh, not as old as the, the the spartanburg plant yes but in its own right has a has a very uh, uh, has been around for quite a long time actually sure 20 19, years 20 years yeah well, not quite 20. We were founded in 1999. Mm -hmm. We're coming up on our 20th anniversary, but it is a, it is America's only, it really is the only purpose-built single mark facility of its kind. Mm -hmm. Lots of other manufacturers rent space and do a lot of traveling shows, Right. but as far as a teaching facility goes that is able to host corporate groups and things like that, this facility is without equal. I'm certain if you, if uh, somebody is interested in buying an X3 or whatever, and they, they come out here and then you guys take them on the track and take them out here, I think they're pretty much sold. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think it's well, also a great way to market your cars. No doubt, right? We, you know, it is fantastic. And also, we are the home of a United States delivery as well. Okay. So we do performance center deliveries kind of like we do the European delivery. They get to come here and drive a car like theirs on track, mm -hmm. but not theirs on of track, course. right? This, I'm going to show you another feature. This is called Hill Descent Control. Okay. Also a holdover from the last vehicle, mm -hmm. I mean the last generation, but this is a little improved. It has more capability now. It is adjustable like the cruise control from two all the way up to 15 miles per hour. You adjust it just like adjusting the cruise control. You mm -hmm. can see me moving the number up right here. Mm -hmm. So I can move this up to five. I'm going to set it at five. This means when we go over the top, I'll take my feet completely off the pedals. Right. And all I have to do is steer, and it will maintain a departure speed of okay. five miles per hour by braking all four wheels mm -hmm. individually, mm -hmm. which also keeps us pointed mm -hmm. exactly where the steering wheel is pointed. Mm -hmm. That system works in forward and reverse, even if you're towing a trailer. Okay. A lot of people use that maybe to launch their boats and things like uh -huh. that, right? It's fantastic. At right. two miles an hour, it's one less thing to worry about. That's true. It's fantastic. So, is the X3 a car that you would buy yourself if you're in the market for a compact I, SUV or the I X5 would. or the X... Uh, in fact, my wife drives an X5, right? Okay. So, because I have three boys, so we appreciate that a little bit bigger cargo bay. Mm -hmm. But um, I think the X3 and especially the new X3 M4i is fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, it is clearly the best on-road performing X3 we've ever had. And it is absolutely a car I would consider buying. Okay, so can, can you walk, walk us through what's happening here? So this X drive is mm -hmm. throwing power to the tire that has the most grip, which is the right front. Right. The left front and the right rear are not even on the ground right now. Right. And still we have no problem getting up on this 28 degree side angle berm. The magic of the X drive mm -hmm. is that it can throw up to, it can throw up to 100% of power or brake to only one tire if mm -hmm. only one tire has grip. Mm -hmm. So it sends power, you know, asymmetrically to wherever the grip 
is available. And this just increases confidence and capability on road and off road. It helps with things like lap times as well mm-hmm. as climbing up on side angle berms, right? Definitely, definitely. Well, I must say I am I'm fairly impressed with this car uh, on road and off road. And I'm also very much interested in looking forward to getting my hands on the car. Unfortunately, these guys won't let me drive the car today I know. because this is not a uh, production uh, model. It's a, pr- a pure prototype and it's not officially launched yet. So you guys have to wait until August. But as you can see from what we've been doing here today, if you're in the market for a small SUV, the X3 should definitely be on your list. BMWs have always been about driving pleasure. I mean the M6, the M4, the M2, and now the new X3. Because the M40i that we drove today, or rather experienced today, was really impressive on track. It could change direction so quickly, had the grunt and the power and the agility to thrill anybody. But because it's an SUV, it could even go off-road, as we clearly saw. Has great departure angles, has a great four-wheel drive system, which uh, transfers the torque to the wheel with the most traction, and is really capable off-road. So, I'm fairly impressed. Yes, some things are still not the best in the segment, like for example the seat in the back, sorry, the space in the back seat. But all in all, if driving dynamics and a great uh, badge is what you're after, the BMW X3 certainly ticks most of your boxes. Of course, today we just had a first look at the world premiere, but stick around once we finally get this car in our hands to do a full review, and then we can really discover what it's fully capable of. So, thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys are interested in this car. Let us know what you think and put your comments down below. So the Spartanburg plant that we were in um, at this event is actually BMW's largest plant worldwide and it's the first plant outside of Germany that they established. They're celebrating today the 25 year anniversary of this plant since it was built. This plant produces all the X SUVs of BMW except for the X1. So any X3, X4, X5, X6 that you see in the world was built in this factory. In fact, they built so many of these SUVs there that up to 75% of those cars are exported, making it the USA's largest automobile exporter. But not only that, I also have a small personal history with the BMW Spartanburg plant. When I was young, I used to live in Atlanta, and even then, my father was also very much interested in cars. He would teach me how engines worked, he taught me how to drive, how to ride motorcycles. And um, we used to drive up to Raleigh, which is not too far from here, every now and again to meet some friends and family. And every time we would drive up and down, uh, he would see that we were passing by the BMW Spartanburg plant just off the highway. And one day he's like, you know, I should take my son there. He would love to see how all these cars are made. So he calls up the BMW Spartanburg plant, this very plant, uh, 17 years ago. And he said, hey, can I bring my son down? He would love to see how the factory works. Unfortunately, at that time, I was too young because they have a policy that they don't let children below the age of 12, I think, uh, to go inside. And that was that. He forgot about it. By the time I was 12, I was living in Chicago, so just completely vanished. And a few weeks ago, I was on the phone talking to my dad, and I was like, hey dad, yeah, I have so many projects coming up, this thing, that thing, etc., and I'm also going to Spartanburg in the US. He's like, wait a minute, Spartanburg? That sounds familiar. Is there a racetrack there? And I said, no, I don't think so, but it's probably a BMW plant since I'm going for a world premiere. And then he was like, oh my God, I remember. And he told me this really fantastic story. So I've come a full circle. When I was young, I tried to come to the factory, but I couldn't. But finally, after 16 years, here I am, and I had a great time. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and leave a thumbs up, subscribe, and make sure you follow us on Instagram and Facebook as well.